So we have to cover an absolutely tragic, senseless, and infuriating story coming out of Florida surrounding a 16-year-old girl who lost her life to COVID-19 after her mother, who is a diehard Trump and QAnon supporter, took her to a quote-unquote COVID party, where about 100 children from her church community, from that community, were there to get sick explicitly. That was the goal. And lo and behold, this young woman did. And because she was already a brave and resilient cancer survivor, none of this is made up. She was immune deficient and put her at further risk. And every step along the way from that first step to her passing, her mother and other people close to her absolutely failed this young woman when she needed it most. For me, guys, this is absolutely heartbreaking. In a general sense, it is, but specifically because I have a young son myself, much younger than than Carson was here, much younger than this 16-year-old, but to think of how this mother would every step of the way do the exact wrong thing based on faulty and hateful and conspiratory ideologies coming from QAnon, from far-right churches, and from the president himself, that she would just do this to harm her daughter, just shatters me, guys. It absolutely shatters me, especially because this young woman, again, survived already. She already beat the odds. She already had to go through so much. It's so tragic that a young person would even have to get something like cancer and survive it, let alone lose their life to it. And yet this young girl who, according to her mother, had done so much volunteering and was a bright, hopeful, kind person because of her mother's negligence and because of her mother's failure to understand and accept and act upon basic medical science, we no longer have this girl. Her friends and family and community no longer have this girl. This, again, was not an accident. Every step of the way, things could have been done differently. I'm going to read you a basic rundown of what happened from that party to this young person losing their life. And I want to read it out because I want to get it exactly right that every step of the way, things could have been different. And that if this person, if her mother Carol was not totally inundated with Trumpian QAnon anti-science ideology, she might have done something different. So it says here, on June 10th, Carson's mom Carol took Carson, a 16-year-old girl who was immunocompromised with a history of health issues, including cancer, to a quote-unquote COVID party at her church where more than 100 children without masks were in attendance. Her mom, who is not a doctor, surprise, surprise, guys, then prescribed her daughter azithromycin, I think I'm saying that right, an antibacterial drug with no known benefits for fighting COVID-19 for several days. During that quote-unquote treatment period, Carson developed headaches, sinus pressure, and a cough. A few days later, without talking to her doctor, her mother would later report that her daughter quote-unquote looked gray on June 19th. Again, this is nine days Since the party, lots of time to have actually consulted somebody who knows what the hell they're talking about. So she put Carson on her grandfather's oxygen machine. My God, guys. When that still did nothing to combat the cough, the headaches, the sinus infection, the fever, her mother started giving her hydroxychloroquine, which Donald Trump has often touted without sufficient medical knowledge as a quote-unquote cure for this illness. Carson immediately worsened and was finally taken to medical professionals where she was admitted to the pediatric. ICU. When she couldn't breathe on her own, her mother declined intubation. The hospital began plasma treatment on June 20th, 21st, but the damage to Carson's cardiorespiratory system was too severe, and she was ordered to be intubated on June 22nd. She passed away the next day. Basically, this person, 16, 17 years old, depending on you know when you're measuring this, lost their life because their mother was so entrenched in this far-right ideology. And you can go and check her Facebook page. It's, it's all there. That this person would have rather been right about her support for Trump, her opposition to doctors and nurses and science, and her belief in QAnon conspiracy theories, rather than admit, maybe I don't know what the heck I'm talking about, and take my daughter to a doctor, get the actual prescriptions and treatments and procedures needed to take care of her. Look. I'm going to judge you if you take your child to a party with 100 other kids and they're not wearing masks. But if at that point you realized you made a mistake, you realized you were wrong, 
Like there's time to come back from that. There's time to come back from that and realize you made a mistake. And, and for the betterment of your family and whatnot, you're going to fix it and hopefully convince others to not do what you did. But we didn't see that here. She took her child to the party, then gave unprescribable medicine. She's not a doctor. Then tried to use someone else's medical equipment, which isn't designed to help somebody, a 16-year-old girl facing this particular illness. And then trying something which, again, Trump has talked about, but has not actually been utilized, especially in the way that this mother was, quote unquote, prescribing it to her daughter and then took her to the hospital, but refused the treatment most likely to save her daughter's life. I don't know if there's going to be charges. I don't know what legal consequences there will be. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a officer of the law. That's not my responsibility. And I don't want to speculate. I don't want to speculate on that. What I do want to say, though, is that when we look at all of these Karens and all of these people who don't wear their gosh darn masks and we laugh at them and I do that, too, and we should. They deserve to be mocked and ridiculed. We have to remember that it's not just them at risk. It's not just them and it's not just the people that are around them. Most serious of all are a lot of these people have little children or teenagers who do not have the ability to escape their mother or their father's bad choices and anti-science conspiracy theories. Remember that right now we are dealing with a crisis and the most vulnerable people are often those dependent on the dumbest and most reactionary of all of us. If we're going to fight this and the reason the United States is so lagging behind the rest of the developed world, we need to realize that there are people out there who have a direct ideological motivation in rejecting the very things needed to stop it. And until we strike that, it's not just about quote unquote education. It's about actually fighting the ideologies that root this desire for COVID to be fake. We have people who go to the hospital with it and then realize that the doctor is trying to treat them for it and then reject it or fight it because what does that do? What does that do if you're getting treatment for COVID? My God, I actually got it. The president was wrong. I should have worn my mask. This is not a hoax. QAnon is just some random thing on the internet. Maybe it doesn't know as much as a doctor or nurse or Dr. Anthony Fauci or whoever. I would have to admit that maybe I don't know everything. And so that's the real tragedy here. And that's why I have absolutely no sympathy for Carol, for her mother. I have none or any of the people like this. And when everyone says, why do you have to be so mean? Why do you have to mock these people and call them Karens? Because it's about more than them. It's about everyone else they're harming. Little children, they're, teen they're teenagers, they're people they're supposed to love most of all. That's why we do this. And that's why we're not going to ignore this story.